Hey, it's Mike here, and today, oil on a whole food vegan diet, a recent study that came out on it. And yes, I'm sorry, we're covering this topic again. It just, just can't go away. But recently, I was saying, wouldn't it be so interesting if we just had a study comparing people on a whole food vegan diet with oil versus without oil and really see what the difference is. And then a few hours later, I hopped on PubMed and found this very recent study from the Journal of the American Heart Association doing just that, in particular with extra virgin olive oil. I wish thinking of a study and having it magically appear worked all the time. Like if I, Mike, actually worked out hard, would I get buff? Nope, not on PubMed. I know a lot of people still think of me as the guy that made the oil the vegan killer video, and while I still stand by a lot of what is in that video, I have made several follow-ups talking about, for example, context of whether we're talking about somebody who is young and healthy with no disease versus somebody who has severe cardiovascular disease and recently had a stroke, etc. I even made a video about when people would benefit from eating oil a lot, as well as making a oil ranking video, and I will say extra virgin olive oil did quite well on that. But we have to remember where a lot of that anti-oil sentiment started, and that was you know, Dr. Esselstyn on stage saying, no oil, even extra virgin olive oil, when talking about treating his cardiovascular patients. And of course, he's seen astounding results putting people on a whole food vegan diet without oil. And lightning fast reminder, that was this study where he had 177 patients over the years stay on the diet and of them they had a 0.6% rate of adverse events. Well, the 20 people that quit had a 60%. It's not perfect math, but it's also incredible math. But of course the idea to stay away from extra virgin olive oil was seen as like insane, especially because it's part of that healthy Mediterranean diet, etc. We'll get more into that, but I did even caution against that in my video, we'll elaborate more on the nuances of that and newer data as well. But my concern was, look, if you're really pounding down some extra virgin olive oil even, you can start you know, adding up the grams of saturated fat, which we'll look at here in a second with the study. And of course, saturated fat raises LDL, which is causally linked to atherosclerosis. So the study at hand was asking, is there an LDL difference? That was their main question. However, they looked at a bunch of other markers. We get some inflammation marker results, glucose results as well, which are super interesting, but let's just get right to it. It is this study, which was published very recently, and it was on 40 individuals and is a randomized crossover trial. These subjects averaged at the age of around 65 and they all started off just on a standard meat including diet. And then they were randomized to one of two groups, either a group that went whole food vegan with high olive oil to start and then switched over to a whole food vegan low olive oil or the exact opposite, starting at low and then going to high olive oil. Now, obviously the oil itself, which has zero fiber, is not a whole food. So it was whole food plus a processed food in one case. And so they started on one diet and then they actually had a one week washout period where they just returned to whatever diet they wanted and then they switched those diets. And it was the case that they didn't get told to add any exercise like that, but they did monitor exercise. We'll talk about that in a bit. They also didn't control their calories, which is worth mentioning and then also gave them cooking classes, which I think is really cool for a study. But you might be wondering, how much is high olive oil? How much is low olive oil? Well, in the high group, they were given four tablespoons per day. And in the low group, they were told to stay under one teaspoon. They were essentially trying to be no oil, but did as much as is practically possible. And just to put that into context, four tablespoons of olive oil is about 475 calories when you know, you're supposed to be eating around 2000 calories per day. But then a teaspoon at that threshold for the low oil group is only 40 calories worth of olive oil. So you can see about a 10 fold or more difference in calories from oil here, which is worth noting. And this is where we can talk about saturated fat, adding up a little bit here because the four tablespoons of olive oil has about 7.5 grams of saturated fat. It's about one and a half slices of cheddar cheese, for example. And now for the results, it says, Everybody quit after realizing they were tricked into being vegan. <laughs> I'm joking. Actually, they boasted quite high adherence, but the results in terms of that LDL or bad cholesterol was that in both of the whole food vegan groups, high or low olive oil, we saw a lowering in LDL from baseline, but it was 
more of a lowering in the low olive oil group. And this is where the results are a bit dramatic is when they were switching between high and low. Comparing that from this chart, we can see that from high to low olive oil, there was a 13 point drop in LDL. And from low to high, we saw a 16 point increase in LDL. I mean, these numbers are no joke. It's LDL, not LOL. And this is where when you're asking the question, is olive oil healthy? It completely depends on context. As I've said in the past, replacing animal fat, and as the study says, replacing animal fat like butter and mayonnaise with olive oil is obviously gonna be an improvement, but you know, does it have an advantage over other oils that even say in the study, hey, no, it doesn't appear to lower mortality compared to other oils. But here in terms of the number one risk factor for the number one killing disease, uh, it's not looking great for this high amount. We gotta have some nuance here because <laughs> There's a huge spectrum between four tablespoons and virtually zero. Yeah, it is a case that you probably could eat four tablespoons pretty dang easily, throw two tablespoons into a salad, you know, and then end up consuming two tablespoons by stir frying a bunch of veggies at a couple meals. Like, I don't think it's that hard to do. But it is also the case that we can infer a bit of a spectrum from this. Yeah, one tablespoon of olive oil might make like a two or three point difference. Again, that's speculation. And then another one may make two or three more, two or three more after that. And now for a quick break with today's sponsor, Fume. You might have not heard of Flavored Air, which is now a leading alternative to vaping and smoking, uh, but now you have because Fume is one of those devices. I've actually been going around Europe looking so cool and hot with my Fume device. Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe I'll never look cool. The French people certainly didn't think I did. Uh, but yeah, Fume is not a vape. It's not a cigarette. It doesn't require batteries. It doesn't have nicotine. You are essentially essentially drawing in some air that is super delicious. For example, this is the mint flavor, which I personally love after I eat. And they have a variety of flavors. So I think this is a great tool to tackle bad habits. For example, you get your oral fixation in, but then you also have an awesome fidgeting tool. You can spin this little air intake and it makes a nice fun sound. You can also chew and fidget with a topper, which is essentially a soft cover, which you can get for free using the code MikeTheVegan at fume.com. That's F-U-M dot com. So use the QR code or click the link below and you can be one of the 300,000 plus people that have tried Fume and perhaps the next success story. So what do the researchers say about these findings? Well, they say, quote, they suggest that extra virgin olive oil may not be the beneficial additive of a Mediterranean diet. In addition of it, after following a low extra virgin olive oil pattern, could impede further LDL reduction, so really missed opportunity. But this is where I'm sad that they didn't look at artery function or flow-mediated dilation because it was a study that I've shown in the past by Vogel that showed worse artery function, but we're at a point where it's like there's that one study and then just a ton of studies showing the opposite. Pretty robust evidence showing that people on a standard diet given olive oil improves their flow-mediated dilation. And the quality of olive oil is huge with this 2021 study showing that high phenolic olive oil improved artery function slightly while normal olive oil made it worse. So that would have been so interesting to see if there was a difference in artery function between these groups, high versus low olive oil. But of course there are foods that probably won't raise your LDL even on a whole food vegan diet but would improve flow-mediated dilation, which we'll cover later. But then I will say that in both of these groups, the LDL reduction during that second half, once they crossed over after the washout period, wasn't as compelling. It was a smaller reduction. And from the supplementary material, it's clear that this is because during their washout period, on a standard diet, their LDL was shooting back up, didn't make it all the way back up, but it was still lower from the original period. Still, this is a testament to how effective the diet is. Just look at that. However, it's also worth mentioning that despite fiber lowering cholesterol at about one milligram per gram, the fiber intake was roughly the same between the two vegan groups. So no evidence that fiber made the difference. All right, now let's look to some of the other results. For example, inflammation levels and your glucose levels. And they say, quote, going from low to high oil led to an increase in lipids, quote, glycemic measures and C-reactive protein. In contrast, the removal led to a decrease in these measures, saying that lower is optimal for lowering cardiovascular disease risk. But I wanna be clear, C-reactive protein, that inflammation marker did lower from baseline in both, but it was only statistically significantly lower in the low oil group in a short period of time, which is awesome. And this is just 
another study showing that a vegan diet lowers inflammation. And this is another study that shows that switching from a meat-based diet to a vegan diet leads to weight loss. We're talking about a four kilogram weight loss with the low olive oil group, losing about 0.7 more kilograms in the high group. Of note, the calorie intake was significantly lower in the low oil group. So one criticism could be maybe the results were from lower calories. How do you know it was the oil? We don't have all the answers, but oil is the most calorie dense food that we eat at nine calories per gram. It it has zero fiber, so doesn't trigger satiation through that way. But speaking of fat, that brings me to one of the criticisms of the study that it wasn't actually low fat like all of these plant-based doctors are saying that it should be. Even in the study itself, they say that, you know, 10 to 15% or less of total calories from fat you know, is what a low fat whole food vegan diet is. So where did they land? Well, they landed at 48 and 32% of total energy intake from fat in the high and low olive oil phases. You know, I think it's about people's dietary goals, but I personally don't push the low fat thing really hard. I think avocados in most people's context would be absolutely fine. I mean, I have yet to see them do anything bad. Now, there are valid concerns that with higher fat, you might more easily increase overall calorie consumption, which can raise things like triglycerides, etc. But I just can't be too afraid of these things where, for example, the low olive oil group got their fat from to get up to that 32%. We're talking avocados, nuts, seeds, and olives, which they say retain inherent dietary fiber and intact phytochemicals. And that's why case by case makes sense to me. And there's some people that go on a whole food, vegan diet, low fat diet, and they end up getting a BMI that I personally think is too low and would be associated with negative health outcomes on its own. So this brings us to the question, is there something that people might be able to eat to also increase that flow mediated dilation, that artery function, or at least hope to, but not raise LDL? Well, how about avocados? which I just mentioned from this study, they didn't see an increase in flow mediated dilation, but they say you know, their artery function was pretty good to begin with. And then we have the topic of walnuts, which I think are a great contender. For example, this meta-analysis found that they did improve that flow mediated dilation without raising LDL. However, the walnut industry had its nuts all over <laughs> the funding of these studies. But it is a case that one that isn't funded by the walnut industry, like this one, did find the same results, improved artery function. But one walnut commission study that compared olive oil to walnuts found that flow mediated dilation was worse after the olive meal than after the walnut meal. So walnuts won, however, they didn't mention the quality of the olive oil, it's biased, they probably used like total crap. <laughs> but the idea here is that if there is truth to even a vegan who's already getting phytochemicals going and getting increased artery function from olive oil. Uh, there's other places you can also get antioxidants that do the same thing. Walnuts, even straight up olives themselves, which would be really hard to eat 475 calories of. I know some of you are like, is that a challenge? <laughs> and for a couple final details here, we have exercise. It's interesting because they didn't tell them to increase their exercise, but they tracked their exercise. And we can see that there's you know, no statistically significant difference between the different olive oil groups, but we can see that exercise trended upwards a little bit. And in fact, trended highest, non-statistically significantly, but still highest in the low olive oil group, which you know, pushes what I've been saying all along, like where if you are eating those whole carbs and you're losing weight, et cetera, like they did in this case, then you're gonna be more likely to wanna get out and move, which I think conflates the whole healthy user bias thing when you become a healthy user from your healthy diet. And then finally, just in case you're wondering about funding, I mean, what, what evil source would fund this? Would it be like the anti-olive lobby? I don't know, we have a foundation here. There doesn't appear to be any meaningful conflict of interest. I think they were just curious about what would happen. This has been a bit of a contentious topic over the years. In the end, this is a very interesting study. I've gotten a lot of flack for poo-pooing oil in the past. And again, I've tried to add nuance to that, but most people just saw the original video. But in a way, this makes me feel a little bit vindicated. Yeah, like <laughs> under the exact context that I'm talking about, we have a missed opportunity if you are eating enough olive oil. However, I can't help but wonder if one tablespoon would actually make a difference. And uh, my gut instinct is no. However, if you're somebody who just suffered some severe heart event and wanna do everything that you can, I think that's the angle that Dr. Esselstyn is coming from. He's like, anything that might create an issue, let's just get it out of there and be safe. But for like younger, healthy people eating a vegan diet, should they be deathly afraid of a tablespoon of olive oil? 
I really don't think so. And so I'm sorry if I made anybody feel that way, <laughs> but I still stand by the idea that obesity in a vegan context is gonna be mainly driven by oil consumption. In certain cases, you know, soft drink consumption might be doing it. But of course, obesity increases risk of a ton of diseases. And so, you know, keeping oil low is awesome. I think still. So yeah, it wasn't a perfect study, but it was still a randomized crossover trial, which is you know, as much as I can ask for. And this point would have been cool if it was bigger, would have been cool if it had a longer washout period, would have been cool if they did artery function test as well, but amazing results. Keep that LDL down out there. And of course, if you would like to try Fume, you can click the link below or snap this QR code and you can use the code MikeTheVegan and get your free little topper. All right, let me know if I forgot anything in the study, any other points, and of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Forgot to snap. <laughs>